Christians in the 21st century think too little about God's creation. Consequently, we think too little about God. We're so enamored with ourselves, our schedules, work, technology, and extracurricular activities, and much more, that we often fail to see the stars and smell the roses. Today, perhaps more than any time in history, man misses the apparently simple things in life that should cause us to meditate continually upon the greatness of the Creator. Of course, nothing is more important for Christians to meditate on than God's Word, but in conjunction with God's special revelation, His Word, we ought to ponder about how God's amazing natural revelation, His creation, testifies to God's infinite power, intelligence, and care. Time and again, Holy Writ points to God's creation as proof of His greatness. Since the time of Job, Noah, and going as far back as Adam, man has learned some wonderful things about God by considering His amazing creation. The Apostle Paul wrote that since the creation of the world, His, God's, invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead. Perhaps no other book of the Bible leads man to deeper meditation on God's greatness than the book of Psalms. Yet interestingly, oftentimes this same inspired book turns man's attention to God's creation. In Psalm 8, for example, David praised the excellent name of the Lord who set His glory above the heavens, who made the moon, stars, man, and even the beast of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. What did David conclude? O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. In Psalm 19, we are reminded that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. In Psalm 33, we learn of one of the reasons that humanity is to fear and stand in awe of the Lord. Because by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. For He spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Consider the climax of the book of Job, when God spoke to the patriarch out of a whirlwind. Instead of informing Job of the exact reasons for his suffering, God spoke to him about his creation. And beginning in Job chapter 38, verse 39, and going through chapters 39, 40, and 41, God spoke to Job about several different animals, including the lion, the hawk, behemoth, and Leviathan. Of all of the things God could have said to Job, he spent 77 verses talking about some of his animal creation. He chose to teach Job about his all-powerful, all-knowing, supreme nature by describing some of the magnificent animals that he had created. The prophet Isaiah once wrote about being allowed to see a vision of the throne of God. In the Lord's presence were angelic beings crying out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. What is the basis of this praise? What is one reason we should be driven to worship God? Isaiah revealed one of the pillars of God's praise in the very next line. The whole earth is full of His glory. Indeed, the beauty, splendor, and design of God's creation should drive us closer to the Creator. His fingerprints should make us stand in awe of Him. They should drive us to our knees in worship of Him. And they should compel us to tell others about Him. As the psalmist sang, we should declare His glory among the nations, His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised.